Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. I apologize for getting this one out a day late. I like to post when I'm posting regularly. I like to post on Wednesdays and obviously that didn't happen. It's Thursday today and well, I'm trying to get this video out to you today. And this video is going to be a little bit different from some of my other videos. There's not going to be <clears throat> a lot of content of things that are happening. Um, this is just me talking to you. <clears throat> about stuff that's happened in the last month and a half while I've been dealing with having broken both my legs. If you want to hear the story about how I broke my legs, you need to go back to the the video that's previous to this one and that explains um, what all happened there. But while I was dealing with it, I, w I was in two different emergency rooms um, on two separate occasions. And then I also saw an orthopedic surgeon in Arizona and I saw another one in um, in my hometown and so every experience that I had except well every experience that I had in all four of those situations there was um, there was problems and I want to talk about that but I want to qualify that first by saying that I I've never wanted my channel to be negative I, I like to keep things positive on this channel. I've never wanted to be um, the Debbie Downer or the complainer. Um, I just want you to see life as it is for somebody who spends a lot of time um, camping and traveling and at one point living in my minivan as a person in a wheelchair. Um, so this one is going to be more of a complaining video and I'm not putting it up because I want to complain and well, maybe that's not true. I probably want to complain a bit too, just to get it off my chest, but I'm also putting it up because I hope that there are maybe nurses or medical um, people that watch this channel um, that might have uh, their eyes open to um, a new situation for them. Like if they're dealing with somebody in within their medical situation, their job or whatever. Um, sorry, I'm not making this very clear, but I'm hoping that there are people in the med medical profession that see this video and maybe uh, develop an understand a better understanding of what a person in a wheelchair coming in might be experiencing um, when they come to you that might be different from somebody else who doesn't have a disability or doesn't have, um, yeah, doesn't have a disability coming in to see you. So anyways, that said, after I broke my legs, I, uh, I went to an emergency room. I was in Mexico when it happened and I had to drive back out of Mexico to Tucson and I went to a hospital there to the emergency ward and um, I got there about five o'clock at night and registered and saw the triage nurse and then I waited and I waited and I waited. I had told the triage nurse that that I had was pretty sure I had broken my leg. At that point I only thought I had injured one of my legs. It turns out that both of them were broken but I didn't discover that. Um, until a couple of days later. So uh, I told the triage nurse that I was pretty sure I had broken my leg and she was asking questions like, what's your pain level? Well, me as a person in a wheelchair with a spinal cord injury, I don't have sensation in my legs. I can't feel my legs. You could kick my legs, you could cut my legs and I wouldn't feel it. So there was no pain um, that I had because of the broken legs, except for when something's wrong with in my body, I do get a referred pain and I was experiencing that and it comes, that's not a constant thing. It comes in waves. So it'll come and it'll be really extreme for maybe 30 seconds and then it goes away again. And so she says, well, what's your, like I told her that I couldn't feel my legs. So I had no pain from the break, but that I did have this referred pain. Um, and she says, well, what's your pain level with that? And I said, well, it's probably a 10 because it is pretty extreme when it comes on. But I wasn't having a pain when I was telling her this. I didn't appear to be in pain. And she didn't seem to understand that I think she thought I was lying. And along with that, 
um, she wanted an address and obviously I was traveling, so I didn't have one. So I just said, um, I'm living out of my van while I'm here. And I think this is just an assumption, but I think that she assumed that I was a homeless person and homeless people, um, it shouldn't be this way. And that's why I'm bringing it up because it really shouldn't be this way. Everybody deserves the same care, whether you're a homeless person or whether you're somebody who's a multimillionaire, billionaire, whatever. You all deserve, we all deserve the same care. But those two things are the only two reasons why I can figure that I got the kind of care that I got that night, which was basically nothing. Um, the waiting room was pretty much full when I got there. And I spent the whole night there watching people come and go. And there was nobody there that was there when I first started. Um, it was a whole new set of people. And actually, there was only five people left in the waiting room. None of them had been there when I first got there. And I, about, I don't know, two or three o'clock in the morning, I started going up to the desk and saying, so I don't understand why, why I haven't been seen yet. You know, there's pretty much nobody else left in the waiting room that hasn't been seen. And I said this to the, I think she would be like a registration clerk. And she said, we're, we're getting to you, we're getting to you. And one time I went up there and there was a different person there. And I think that this is, again, I'm making assumptions, but this is what it felt like to me. I went to and talked to this guy who was somebody that seemed to come and go from the desk. Um, and as soon as I said something to him, it was like he had this um, condescending and sort of bossy and kind of angry with me attitude, which made me think that I had never talked to him that night. So the triage nurse must have said something to the people in there, which put a slant on how everybody there dealt with me. Um, so everybody seemed to be under the impression that I was not really there for care, that maybe I was just there for a warm place to stay that night. Um, I finally, uh, went up the last time I went up, I said, I've seen people being called away for x-rays and I presented to you as a person who really believes she has a broken leg. So when will I be getting my x-ray? And, um, they finally agreed and sent me for an x-ray. And when the x-rays came back, one of the nurses came up and apologized profusely because my leg was broken in two places, completely sheared, like broken in half. There was no connection um, left in those bones. And so she came and apologized profusely and then things started to move. But by the time that happened, it was seven o'clock in the morning. And like I said before, I had got there at five o'clock the night before. Um, so it was a long wait. And then still, you know, once I was seen, they had to put splints on and do all the rest of that. I never got out of that hospital until about 1030 the next morning. Um, I just really feel like there was a problem with wh how they were perceiving me as someone who maybe had lied about, um, about my pain, lied about uh, or I didn't lie, but, or um, them thinking that I was a homeless person. It just really, really felt like I, uh, I got pushed to the back because because they had some kind of attitude about me. And um, I'm telling you, I'm I was so angry that night. I spent that night uh, bent over, crying, um, and angry, and just so so frustrated that not that it was taking so long to see me because I understand that sometimes waits in in ERs um, can be a very long time and don't get me started on that because that's something that probably shouldn't be either but I understand that's just the way it is but that's not why I spent all that time there so um that's the first story and I guess the takeaway from that for anybody who's in the medical profession is that Make sure you ask a lot of questions so that you really understand the situation. Um, when I go into any medical appointment with any kind of medical person, I always make sure that they understand 
what my situation is. And a lot of times I feel like they don't actually hear me. It's like, well, they're the medical profession. They will decide. But I've had a lot of bad decisions made about my medical care because they didn't understand the whole situation, even though I told them um, and they didn't understand. And so I'm, I'm going into any ER room or doctor's appointment sort of with my guard up anyways, because I know that um, it's going to be a discussion and I need to have discussion with people. And maybe I don't present in a positive way in those discussions. I really do try to. Um, not always. Sometimes I'm already angry just because of the way I'm being treated. Um, and that's I think, understandable given the fact that I know this is a history. I've been in this chair for almost 40 years, and I know that when I go somewhere, I'm going to be misunderstood and that I need to be really clear about what my needs are and what my concerns are. And so I don't, um, I don't think that always comes across as positive to people, and so it puts their guard up, and I understand that. But I just... I guess, again, the takeaway from this first experience is just that that as a medical person, if you're listening to this or watching this video, um, ask a lot of questions. And if, and if somebody is trying to present to you information that is specific to them, listen to them because we're not just saying it to talk. We're saying things so that you understand and can make a better decision about my care. So that said, that was the Tucson Medical Center. They referred me to an orthopedic surgeon who I saw a couple of days later. And I saw him and he was actually really good. He was the one that discovered that my other leg was broken because I went in then and I and I had started to bruise really bad on my on that leg. And so I just showed it to him and said, maybe we should get this x-rayed and he's x-rayed it and it was also broken. So um, he splinted both my legs and I'm going to post a picture right here um, just so you can see what the splint splints look like. They're actually the thumbnail of the previous video, but they were huge and I couldn't fit my feet on the foot plate of my wheelchair. One of my feet had to hang off because these splints were so big. And I don't think he normal. in fact, I know he doesn't normally make them that big, but I had told him about my concerns about skin issues because I don't have sensation in my legs. If something rubs, starts to rub, and these splints are on for a long time, I could develop a bad ulcer, which could develop into something worse. Like, you have to be really careful as a paraplegic with skin issues. And so um, he was trying, he was a very kind man, and he was trying to counter that by putting lots of padding around my feet and so that was great um so I actually don't really have any complaints about him um except for that uh these splints because they weren't done the way he probably normally would do them they started falling off the next day and by the next day I was actually in Tucson Arizona uh, sorry in Yuma Arizona I went to bed that night and by the time I woke up in the morning the splints were were just spraying all over the place. There was material everywhere. And um, so I don't think they were really doing the job they were supposed to be doing. So I looked for a, an emergency room in Tucson, or sorry, in Yuma. I went to this one um, that was near where I had stayed overnight. And uh, when I went there, um, when they admitted me into the little emergency room room, um, they said, we need you to get up on this gurney. And the gurney had a height difference between my chair and, and this much. And when I was younger, I probably could make that transfer no problem, but I'm older and I'm heavier and I just don't do that. And plus I'm a little bit nervous now because I've got two broken legs. And so transfers are different when you've got these two heavy splints on your feet. So I, I wasn't going to do it. And they said, well, you have to get up there. And I'm like, well, you're going to have to figure out how I get up there because I, I cannot do it myself. And then I said, well, actually, do you have a transfer board? And I'm going to show you. By transfer board, I need something like this that I use that makes a bridge between my wheelchair and the bed or the gurney in this case. 
that I can slide up. And I wasn't sure even with a transfer board that I would be able to do that. And they said, oh yeah, yeah, we have a transfer board. Well, their idea of a transfer board is something that that they would have at an accident site where um, somebody's on the ground and they have to get them up onto the ambulance gurney. And so it's like this thing that was probably five feet long by two feet wide. And she says, well, this is a transfer board. And I'm like, no, that's not really a transfer board. That's not what I'm talking about. And I can't use that. And she's like, well, we'll just tuck it under your butt and you'll slide up. Well, it was very flexible. There's no way that I was going to stay off the floor, like not fall on the floor because of how flexible this thing was and just how big and awkward. There was just no way. I don't know why they even thought that this was going to be something that was possible, but they did. And so anyways, I said, the only way I'm getting on there is if you guys lift me on there. Oh, well, we're not allowed to do that. And I get that. I get that um, they've got to protect their bodies as well, their backs or whatever. So we were at a, at a standstill. I don't know why they thought I could get up there. Maybe they've seen other people in chairs. This is the other takeaway from this situation um, for medical people is that just because somebody is in a wheelchair doesn't mean that everybody is the same and has the same capabilities. When I was younger, I could have made that transfer no problem, but I'm older, I'm more nervous, and I'm heavier. So transfers are a lot harder for me. So I can't do that. Um, they just seemed determined that I was going to do it myself. And so finally, they said, well, I guess we'll go get the Hoyer lift. And I'm going to show a picture of what a Hoyer lift is. But You've maybe seen them if you've ever been in um, any situation. Well, some of you who have disabilities will know what, what a Hoyer lift is. But anyways, I'm showing the picture. Uh, it's a lift. It's a portable lift that they wheel around the hospital and take it to where it's needed. And so they brought it into my room. They didn't know how to work it. They had me all hooked up wrong and they could tell that it was wrong, but they couldn't figure out how to fix it. Um... I don't know why they didn't bring that out in the first place, and I don't know why they aren't trained to use it properly. Um, I just, that was another really frustrating thing. And so then I'm angry. By the time this has all happened, I'm angry. And so I've got a reputation in this hospital where everybody that comes in is like, okay, we got to, we got to do whatever, um, their attitude was different with me because they knew I was angry. And I'm like, you know, I know that sometimes I do have a problem with anger and I, I get angry too quick, but you know, sometimes it's justified. And, and I really honestly do try not to um, come across that way and try and treat people with respect. And I didn't not treat these people with respect, but they knew I was angry. Uh, so anyways, that's that situation. So then I fly home. Um, uh, somebody came, well, if you'll see, them, if you watch my previous video, uh, a friend came down and picked up my van and I flew home. And uh, I, and so I got it. I talked to my, um, my regular doctor and she referred me to an orthopedic surgeon who saw me, I don't know, a few days after I got back. And, uh, I was in there. Um, this goes back to getting the Hoyer lift in the two, in the Yuma emergency room. The the nurses in this clinic wanted me to get up on the gurney, and I said I just can't do it. And so they said, "Oh, that's no problem. We'll go grab the Hoyer lift." And I'm like, "At least in this hospital, they they knew what it was and they knew how to use it properly. They did really well." Um, but things went sideways again because. Uh, the doctor came in and this was a super busy clinic um, and he only had it. I think I was the last one um, that he saw that day. He came in and he said, yep, both legs are broken. I want you to, I'm going to put boot, um, we'll outfit you with boots, not casts. And I said, well, um, why wouldn't you do casts? And he goes, because you're at risk for your skin issues. And I'm well aware of that. And it's totally a valid point. Um but I felt like I needed to ask questions and I told him why I didn't want the boots and why I would prefer to have the casts. And, and he stopped answering my questions. He just said, what do you want to do? Pretty much like that. What do you want to do? You need to decide. 
I'm like, well, I'm asking questions so that I can decide. And uh, conversation pretty much ended then. And I said, I want casts. And so he told his nurses, there was two nurses or assistants or whatever they were um, that came to put the casts on. But their attitude changed towards me after after my... <sighs> it's just like, you talk to it, anybody in the in the medical situation like that, um, like the doctor, and then it spreads around the whole ER, watch out for that one, she's, she's angry or whatever, she's a Karen, whatever. And so they come in and now the nurses have this attitude towards me when all I wanted was to discuss what the best way was to treat my feet based on the fact that I'm in a wheelchair and not a walking person. So, um, Anyways, they seemed like they were annoyed that they had to put casts on because it sure was a lot easier for them if I put the boots on. Um, anyways, partway through putting the casts on, I asked about anti-skid stuff that I know sometimes they put on the bottom of casts so that people, if they're walking with them, um, their feet don't slip because fiberglass is really slippery on floors and that's what the casts are made of. And the nurse right away, I asked about this and said, could I get some of that put on? And the reason I like that put on is when I'm doing a transfer, my feet, or at least one of my feet is often on the floor. And if my foot slides away, um, it can throw me off balance and I can fall. So I was thinking that anti-skid stuff would be really good on the bottom of these casts. So when I asked for it, the one nurse said, um, well, you don't need that. You're not going to be walking on it anyways. And I'm like, I started to explain and then I just shut my mouth because I thought, you know, with her attitude, she's not going to hear me anyways. So again, totally frustrating situation. That was the last one. Um, I have another appointment in two weeks from now to go back to that same clinic um, to get my cast removed and to have my legs x-rayed so that hopefully hopefully the breaks have healed. I'm not optimistic about that because most people I know that are in chairs that have had broken limbs, um, it just complicates the healing. And so it seems to always take longer. I hope that's not the case with me. I think the fact that I have casts on really helps that because if you have boots on that you're taking, opening up to look at your skin to make sure it's okay, um, you could be jarring the bones and, and doing damage to the healing that has already happened. And so I'm really hoping that because I have these casts on, I'm hoping that there's no skin issues when they come off. And I'm hoping that they're healed. But that's March 12th, they'll be off. Uh, hopefully I have a better experience with that same doctor and possibly those same nurses. I don't know. But anyways, I don't want to end this on a negative note because... I'm really, it's been a learning curve have, uh, having these broken legs and I'm not going out as much um, because it's hard to get around with these stumps on, on the bottom, on the lower part of my legs. But but it'll be over soon, I hope, and I'll get back to being more active and um, life will hopefully improve a little bit. So that's it for this week. Um, sorry that there wasn't more activity in this uh, video, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyways. I hope you maybe learned from it if you're in the medical profession. Not that I'm trying to be an arrogant teacher. I just think information is always good. So take it for what it's worth. And um, everybody just enjoy your week. We'll see you next week.